Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is summarize for you uh, how we go ahead and not only graph the sine and cosine function, but as well as kind of summarize through this course some tips and tricks as well as some common mistakes. So basically, when we went to graph sine and cosine, basically what we did is we looked to first um, identify what the transformations were, you know, look at uh, um, what was A, B, C, and D. And then we went using that information, went to evaluate for the amplitude, the period, x scale, phase shift, and vertical transformation. Once we figured out all of that information, we started at our phase shift and then just applied the, our, our x scale for all of our um, e most important pieces of information. And then we did a period to, uh, and then we did two forms of the period by graphing the function as it relates to its parent graph. So that was kind of just a quick little rundown of what we were supposed to take out of graphing for sine and cosine. Uh, some tips and tricks. Um, as we're going into graphing, you know, you can know how to do everything for, uh, for graphing, but if you don't know what the parent graph looks like, then it's very, very difficult to understand you know, the x scale, what, what are those important characteristics for sine and cosine, because they, even though they're very, very similar to each other, they do slightly differ from each other. So we have to make sure the difference between sine and cosine, as well as what are those important characteristics. And actually, that gets into my what are the important characteristics. You got to know what are all the transformations. How do we figure out the amplitude? What does amplitude mean? How do we know? Um, how do we know what the period is? And you know, <laughs> I kind of went through these as tips and tricks. It's not really tips and tricks, but if you understand the characteristics and what the transformations are, that's the most important thing about graphing. Because really, we can use graphing calculator, we can use computer, anything really to graph. But you got to understand what are the characteristics. What is the amplitude? What does it mean? What is the period? What does the period mean? What is the x? How do you find the x scale? What does the x scale mean? Same thing for phase shift and vertical transformation. All right, some common mistakes. Um, when we first started discussing phase shift, one of the most common phase shifts is we kind of go back to like quadratics. And when we look into quadratics, um, one thing we looked at, you know, is like x minus h, like shifting left or right. So when we have a phase shift, ah, sorry. When we have a phase shift, for instance, like sine of x minus pi, what that tells you is we're going to shift pi units to the right, correct? However, when we start including a b in front of our x, so let's say this is pi um, or pi halves x minus pi. Well, this does not tell us then now we are going to be shifting pi units to the right because now our period has changed. Okay, so we got to be very very careful about the transformations when you have um, a one for your coefficient of x. And yeah, the phase shift is just what you're adding subtract to your x. However, when we have a coefficient other than one, our period is being changed, so therefore our transformation is going to shift. So remember, when doing the phase shift, forget about seeing what is opposite. Always just take whatever's inside of your function, inside those parentheses, and set equal to 0. And the last thing is just kind of knowing like the initial period. This kind of goes back to knowing the parent graph. Um, a lot of students, you know, they don't know where to start, and they kind of get confused, and they will sometimes start at um, 0 always. Well, yeah, you can always start at 0, but if there's a phase shift or something else going on, you're gonna, it's sometimes a lot easier to move with where the initial period has been shifted. Because the initial period starts at 0, but if you're shifting left or right, it's going to be helpful to kind of shift left or right with it when you can go ahead and apply. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a quick little summary of solving the sine and cosine function. Thanks.